Travelers, welcome back. Um, today is April 3rd, 2020. Um, and today we are going to keep reading um, the book, Julian's Secret Agent. Um, and today we are going to focus on the um, character personality, looking for those character traits. Uh, character traits, get ready, go. Character traits are the words that describe what a character is as a person found through their thoughts, actions, dialogue, and feelings. And go ahead and tell me what mental state is. Let's go ahead and think about it, actually. Let's think about it. Character mental state is what a character thinks and how they feel. Say, we got that. We got that. <laughs> I know I can hear you saying the chat, too. All right, scholars. And we are also going to focus on making predictions. Making? Making? Yes, we're going to focus on focus on making predictions. Prediction, get ready, go. Prediction is a good guess what will happen in the... Say, we got that. All right, scholars. So we're going to get right to it. As we're reading, scholars, we're going to get all of that evidence to keep making those predictions um, and also think about um, what a character is like as you're making choices or what they're thinking, feeling, um, and other things as well. So let's get started. We're going to read a new chapter called We Talk Things Over. We got on our bikes and rode to the city park. Huey rode on the back fender of my bike. We, stay, we sat on the steps by the statues where no one could hear us and started planning. We need a motto, I said. All for one, one for all, Gloria said. We'll stick together no matter what happens, no matter how big the danger. We need a secret code, Huey said. How about a warning? I suggested. Always alert. Gloria and Huey nodded. If we see danger, I said, we'll say, hey, hey. If you hear us say that, Huey, it will mean you should stop talking. Let me go ahead and show you that picture super cool looks like they are discussing okay huey agree i was glad if huey stopped talking when i said hey hey i wouldn't have to step on his on his foot anymore to stop him the way things were sometimes i stepped on his foot too hard even worse sometimes i could i couldn't reach it to step on if a situation is too dangerous gloria said we need an escape code Make like a tree and leave, I suggested. Or just make like a tree, Gloria said. That's faster. Can you remember it, Huey? Make like a tree, Huey said. And he wiggled his hands in the air like leaves. Remember, Huey, if we say make like a tree, run. Huey said he would. I figured we were ready for practically anything. Chapter three, we meet the mighty one. When we went over to Gloria's house and had lunch, afterwards, we started patrolling, riding our bikes around. It seems like criminals were staying away from us. By the middle of the afternoon, it was really hot and we were tired. Around four o'clock, we decided to patrol, patrol supermarkets. We thought some criminal might go there to get food and take it back to his hideout. Everything was normal in the first, in the first three supermarkets. Kids crying, mothers or dads pushing shopping carts, kids trying to ride the carts like scooters, people knocking over hundreds of cans of tuna fish, kids demanding a certain kind of candy advertised on TV. The fourth supermarket was one I'd never been to before. We patrolled the same way we had patrolled the others, checking the parking lot first, looking for guns in the back seats of cars, dead bodies, things like that. No luck. We stopped and looked at a dog inside a car. Isn't he cute? Gloria said. She wants a dog even more than Huey and I do. She touched the window, window glass and the dog tried to sniff to sniff her hand, then he looked at her very hard with big brown eyes and, and whined and panted a little bit. And panted a little more, 
he put a, his big shaggy paws against the window. A woman came up behind us. It's a crime, she said. We aren't doing anything, Huey said. Not you, the woman said. The car, the dog, the windows, it's a crime. She pushed, she pushed by us and went towards the store. What's the crime, Huey said. We have to investigate, I said. Ooh, I'm gonna pause right here. I know if you investigate something and they are looking for criminals, what kind of genre is it? Hmm, think about it in your minds. What kind of genre is it? Whoa, I know scholars, if you are doing that in a book or in a story or somebody is looking for criminals or trying to look for clues or things like that, it's called a mystery. Say, so cool, so cool. All right, scholars, let's keep going. Here, Pooch, Gloria called, and he put her hand against the window, but the dog didn't jump. He didn't jump again. He just looked at Gloria and whined and dropped his head against the seat. The dog is sick, Gloria said. It must, it must be really hot in the car, Huey said. I wonder how long he's been in there. I said, he needs to get out. Gloria said, the sun has made the car like an oven. That's what the crime is, that he can't get out. We have to tell the person who owns the car. Let's get the license number, I said. We went around to the front of the car to find the license plate. Gloria wrote it down, mighty one. Then we went inside the store and asked for the manager. A small man came down from the high booth where the, where the money and the receipts are kept. I'm the manager, he said. What can I do for you? It's about a dog, I said. A dog stuck in a car, in a car. The windows are closed and he looks sick. He probably is sick, the manager said. He couldn't even die on a day like today if, he, if he's left there too. He can even die on a day like today if he's left there too long. Scholars, let's think about it for a moment. Why do they write down the car's license plate? And what does this tell you about Gloria? Hmm. Let's think about it for a moment. Well, scholars, I know that they write the license plate number so they can figure out who the owner is and tell him to let his dog out of the car because it's too hot. Scholars, if Gloria is able to figure this out, that is really savvy. I know that she is really smart. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down and put Gloria here, right in the middle. Gloria, she is smart. Nice. License plate number. And I also later on want to describe Julian, so I'm gonna write him down here and Huey. Okay, let's keep reading and see if we can make more predictions and figure out more character traits to describe these characters. Here's a license number, Gloria said. She showed him her notebook. Mighty one, said the manager. Hmm. He climbed into his booth and used the microphone. Will the owner of a car with a license plate, Mighty One, come to the manager's office? He said. Then he climbed down the booth and stood with us and we waited to see who would answer his call. A man came towards us. He was the biggest man I ever saw. He must have been practically seven feet tall. He had two huge bags of groceries that he, had, he was balancing on his shoulders. He was wearing shorts and a t-shirt that said Rambo. He had muscles every place on his body that you could have a muscle, and he looked mean. I pictured myself getting mashed, pictured dad standing by my bed afterwards, shaking his head sadly and saying, Julian, you went too far. Huey looked from the man's toes up to his head and, and back down again three times and whispered to the store manager, when he gets here, why don't you talk? The manager smiled. You children, just speak up, he said. You can do it. Scholars. What does Huey's dialogue tell us about him? What does his dialogue tell us about him? Scholars, I know that dialogue is what a character is saying. 
I'm gonna give you some thinking time right now and I wanna see if you can figure that out. Okay, so what was his dialogue? I know that he says, when he gets here, why don't you talk? I'm gonna go ahead and write this down on my evidence colors. This is really going to help me figure out a character trait. As I'm writing my evidence, I want you to think about a character trait that would describe Huey um, when he said that. So I'm going to write this down. When he gets here, why don't you talk? All right, scholars. I know, like, I am, as I'm thinking, uh, if I said, oh, you talk instead, I don't want to talk, that tells me that maybe um, he might be a little bit scared. So I'm going to write that down into this column. I know that you would be scared if you wouldn't want to talk. Let's keep going. I'll do it, Gloria said. I love dogs. Just then, the mighty one came to a stop practically on top of us and, a, and as big as a skyscraper. He looked at the manager. So what did you call me for? He asked. Gloria looked up at him. You have a dog? She asked. So what? Mighty one said. It's too hot to leave him in a car with the windows rolled up. He would die, Gloria said. Mighty one glared at her. Then he glared at the manager. You called me over here to let three little kids mess in my business? The children are right, the manager said. Look, said a mighty one, pointing his finger down at the manager's nose. When I bought that dog, they told me he was strong, healthy. Dog, they didn't say anything about car windows. That dog is tough. He can take it. I hoped Gloria would say something more, but when I looked around, Gloria was gone. Mighty One stuck his chin out. Then he stuck it back in so he could look down and see us. Didn't anybody ever tell you kids that you should just mind their own business till they grow up? Especially your girlfriend. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and show you that picture. Well, he does like like a very tough guy scholars how does mighty one feel about the children telling him what to do how does mighty one feel about the children telling him what to do scholars remember this is a feeling it's what he's feeling in his heart and not what he is as a person and i think he really doesn't like it he doesn't like that the children are telling him what to do because he wants to do whatever he wants with his dog and he doesn't think he should have to listen to children. Whoa, that's, that is me. Let's keep reading. She's not my girlfriend, I said. She's my friend. I won't let anybody say I have a girlfriend, not even a huge mean man who's seven feet tall. Friend or girlfriend, Mighty One said. Makes no difference. You tell her and then we all saw that Gloria was back. You! Mighty One roared. Gloria smiled, her pretty smile. Excuse me, she said. I was checking your car. Your dog just fainted. Mighty One's mouth hung open like the door of a cave. Crumbles fainted, he said. He dropped all his groceries and ran for the door. Stuff Stuff rolled out of the grocery sacks, a dozen rawhide fit dog's bones, 35 cans of dog food, a ball with a bell inside, five boxes of Wheaties, Breakfast as Champions, a, a book called How to Be a He-Man, and a magazine with an article called 79 Exercises for Your Toes. The manager started picking things up and we helped him. Suddenly, the manager got a huge grin on his face. Just the kind Huey gets. He picked up a book from the magazine magazine rack and stuck it in one of the grocery sacks under the dog food cans. The title was How to Take Care of Your Dog. Sometimes I have to do mischievous things, he said. I just can't help myself. Now we need to take some water out of, out of the store, put water in a bucket, and 
and took it out to the parking lot. Crumbles was lying on the ground in the shade. Mighty One was kneeling next to him, rubbing the dog's neck. We brought some water, the manager said. Mighty One looked up. Thank you, he said. The manager dunked Crumbles' head in the bucket of water. Then he held Crumbles' mouth open and poured some water into it. Crumbles blinked. Crumbles, you're all right. You're going to be fine, aren't you? Mighty One said. Crumbles made a little noise, something like a sigh. Oh, my sweet, adorable Crumbles, said Mighty One, and kissed him on the no nose. <laughs> oh, there's no picture. Misato got tricked. Whoa, scholars. What does this tell you about the children? They stopped a crime. What does this tell you about him? Let's go ahead and take some thinking time. Scholars, I think, I think that the children are very smart, all of them. Well, that is the end of this chapter. I noticed that we didn't really get to Julian scholars, but I know that you could think of character traits on your own to describe Julian. Scholars, I cannot wait um, next week to talk more about character traits and making predictions on your own. Um, I miss you and take care of yourself. Goodbye.